were listening to My Life Radio. This is episode 218, and today I'm interviewing Eric LaRocker and Mario Branovic for the second time. They created something called Analemma Water, which is essentially coherent water encased in a quartz tube. And when outside water reacts with that quartz, there's an information transfer from the coherent water inside that quartz to the water outside of it, say, in your glass. And there's a transfer of information. So the last time I interviewed them, they talked about their glycan age study, the brainwave study, and the plant research on plant growth. This episode, they talk about the ATP study that they've done and the microbiome study, and also how this water affects the microbiome in the soil. So they recently came out with this whole house system, which is a lot easier if you own your house because you don't have to stir every glass with the wand. You can have all the water running into your shower, into your MitoLife drinking water filter, go through the analemma first. And I think this is especially critical if you're on municipal water. They make a great point in this show that it matters as much to reset the memory of the water as it does to remove the contaminants. So I revisit a lot of the topics that we talked about in our previous show, including biophotons, deuterium-depleted water, vortexing, like the Victor Schauberger way, but we cover a lot of new ground. They talk about their ATP study with a 27% increase in adenosine triphosphate in just two months using analemma water, how long you have to bathe in analemma water to see the benefits. I asked them their thoughts on growing in a greenhouse and electroculture, and they dive pretty deep into the agricultural benefits of using analemma water, whether it's better to put the analemma wand under a full moon or a new moon, and the answer might surprise you, and much more. So enjoy the show. Here is Eric LaRocker and Mario Brunovic. All right, Eric LaRocker and Mario Brunovic, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Having us Thank again. Thank you so Thank much, you. Matt, for having us again. We're thrilled to be here. Yeah, it was a really fun show uh, the first time we did it, covering just the basics of analemma and there's been some exciting developments. You guys have new research out and perhaps more exciting, you released the whole house analemma unit, which I'm uh, really excited to install. Yeah, it really is amazing. And uh, we have some specific results with whole house analemma, which is also amazing. We were really uh, um, surprised ourselves with the result. There's something happening there when you take a bath in analemma water as well. So it's really interesting. Wow. Yeah, that was what I was curious is that the transdermal effects that's that's really exciting because i love my bath so yeah yeah definitely uh, i know when when you kind of lay in uh, in the bathtub for like anywhere between 20 minutes and 1 hour your body is going to absorb up to a liter of, of water but we believe that there is something uh, also happening there on an energetic level because results are really 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 interesting and really powerful so we are now actually doing a 100 people study and uh, but early results we already have um, more than few people and every single person had a really profound results with it. So we're really excited uh, about the whole thing. That's really cool. Yeah, I gave my goats away. I was doing goat milk baths, you know, Cleopatra style with uh, Shilajit in the lodestone tub. <laughs> and so I might have, it's probably a good thing I don't have goat milk anymore because if I had your analemma system, I might have blasted off to outer space or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love it. So um, so where do you guys want to start? Like with the with the research that, that you've done since then or? Well, you know, we can, um, uh, uh, well, we can start with there, definitely. I mean, we're doing a lot of research. 
So uh, we are now uh, going to enter into uh, agriculture research big time cool. because uh, we already, I don't know, we spoke last time, um, I think, I don't know uh, uh, what we spoke last time. Uh, have we spoke about uh, the microbiome study that we did I don't on think soil? We- I don't oh think man, so. that that's that's that, that's amazing. Uh, so we we um, we took completely uh, depleted, destroyed soil. So uh, uh, the soil that was comp- that is infertile, and uh, uh, um, we watered one chunk with regular water, and one chunk with analemma water, and then we measured to see what's going to happen. And uh, the chunk that was watered with regular water, basically nothing happened. There was no change. And in the part that was watered with an alema water, there was a huge explosion in the biodiversity of the microbiome. So the soil became fertile wow. again. And so much so uh, is that uh, um, the bacteria in the soil started to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere into the soil where it belongs. But there is also one uh, very interesting element. Uh, usually when the rain falls on soil, the, the minerals actually are, get, get washed away. But uh, w- w- in the part that was watered with an alema, water there was a huge retainment of those minerals in the top layer of the soil so when you plant uh, uh, fr- fruits and veggies on it all of those minerals nutrients they actually end up in the fruit itself so that's also very very uh, uh, interesting um happening so uh, we are now uh, uh, very inspired by the whole thing heavily investing in in agriculture uh research because we what we want we know that uh um food is also extraordinarily important uh, aside from water and when you look at it spinach 15 years ago 20 years ago had eight had 80 percent more nutrients than it has today in conventional uh, uh agriculture so we definitely want to change that is how amazing it would be if we could get the agriculture giants to start to use our technology then all of the produce will actually be exactly the way nature intended with all the nutrients inside plus all the energy because we already proved that uh, when you water uh, uh, for instance we did the research on tomatoes so uh, tomatoes watered with um, an alema water have has 60 percent more vitality 60 percent more bio photons than tomatoes watered with regular water so and uh, biology always follows the energetics. So this is definitely our, uh, our, our research definitely uh, uh, um, firmly concluded that. So when you handle the energetics, then everything else follows. I'm curious. And, and, about- another, and another uh, part of it is, of course, I mean, those plants are, a tomato has an average, I think, of 97% water. So the coherent water anyway will be uh, uh, in the tomato and your cucumber, every, uh, everything will be uh, over there. And plants by themselves, they make also the water coherent. So we also look at it from those two perspectives. It makes it easier for the plants to make the water coherent. And of course, I mean, you have a tomato, a cucumber with analemma water inside. So it's a double-double, if you know what I mean. And of course, the activity, which is very important and uh, uh, in the ATP levels, because the mitochondria in the tomatoes, it become more active. Higher photons in, uh, uh, in a tomato means higher activity of the mitochondria. Because the ATP, when it's being produced, it delivers the light, the biophoton light. So from all perspective, you, I mean, your tomato won't be the same. And probably that's going to be a very exciting test in the future. Personally, I think you need less food. Wow. We already know that those plants need less water. And uh, we're actually going to do the test now in a uh, Croatian university to see if we can cut down the water levels uh, dramatically. And that would could be a huge savior, you know, for water. And as you know, water is a big issue in agriculture. I mean, I think in Spain, the water levels dropped 50 meters. In the U.S., a lot of places also because of the water use in agriculture. So it has a lot of beneficial, you know, uh, effects on, on almost everything. 
That's incredible. I like your theory that we need less food because I've delved into that. I never went breatharian, but I was liquidarian for a time, uh, living on like blue green algae drinks and hibiscus tea and stuff. But there does seem to be truth that the more light you get and that you could absorb actually that that is nutrition, right? I mean, because we're getting electrons and you know, we're getting electrons from sunlight. And that's what we're getting from our food, right? So it makes sense. So if you look, if you look at it from that perspective, I mean, you know how much uh, the seventy uh, percent of your stool actually is a microbiome. We are, we waste a lot, and I mean, a lot of it. Uh, it is waste. It's called waste, uh, but it's not necessary if you eat proper foods. I mean, your stool will be less. The the uh, already they found out in animals, you know that. Uh, uh, I was a while ago on a beautiful farm where they had a whole cycle on that farm with cows, you know. They had their own herbs, their own, the grass, everything was recycled over there. The funny thing was, we were standing in the middle of that cow stable and you didn't smell them. Wow. The stool didn't smell at all. You could almost hold your hand on it and sniff it. It was like, you know, uh, uh, so that's, uh, I mean, from all perspective, things will change. And we waste uh, we waste a lot, literally, in our feces, but also in our water. I'm convinced personally that uh, also your drinking water, will, you will save down on your drinking water. I drink a lot less water than I did in the past when I drink analemma water. In the beginning, you start drinking more because of the whole detoxification aspect in your body. But then, because it's far more sufficient, you don't need, need as, lot of, as much water as before. I mean, uh, I still love my coffee, but it has to do with the caffeine and not with the water <laughs> inside. But that's another story. But the, the water itself it becomes far more efficient. If you think about it, look at it from the past that people say you have to drink two, two and a half liters of water. This is not, it, I mean, it's, it's a waste. Suppose you had to travel for 10 days between one part through the desert to the, to the other side. You had to carry 20 liters of water. That's not, I think, a good idea. I think because the water has less quality now, you need a lot more water to do the whole pre, pre, uh, processing. So you pee a lot out, which is not uh, 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 very efficient. But we need to do it now uh, because of... Uh, the poor quality of water. So if you drink good quality of water, you will drink less water mm. at the end of the story. Interesting. Yeah, and I think uh, breaking down fat for energy, we make, I know we make deuterium depleted water. I would imagine that it's structured as well, like metabolic so-called water. Well, no, I, uh, I think I'm not saying deuterium depleted water is not coherent water. And of course, what you do is uh, uh, you take out the deuterium, which blocks one of the 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 uh, one of the part of the molecule, and um, it's. I think deuterium depleted water is easier to structure. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm doing the test now for myself back home. I bought a lot of deuterium depleted water to see what it does, and I think it's easier to structure because you know. The H is not being blocked by the, the the D from deuterium, so it becomes. I think personally, I have this imagination in my head that it, it's easier to structure because the it's easier to make like in a crystalline form. Mm. Fascinating. I, I hope the price comes down. I know some companies are are more affordable than others, but then there's quality questions. I I get phenomenal results from it, especially when I run the analemma one through it. So. Mm. Exactly. Um, I, That's I, what I mean. Yeah. I want to circle back really quick to the microbiome soil study. Just a quick question on that. Was that done with tap water? Yes. Or, wow. Yes. It has been done by, by tap water. And here in uh, in the Netherlands, uh, the people got, uh, well, it was a double bind placebo controlled uh, uh, research. No, no. We're talking about soil, not. We're talking not, about soil. Soil, not we're human. About, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. On the soil, it was rainwater. Okay. Wow. Still like pretty much tap <laughs> and filter. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. See, uh, now these days in our country, it's worse. Right. You don't want to drink any rainwater over here anymore. You don't know what's coming down, especially in the Netherlands. You know, it's, uh, yeah. 
uh, the air is uh, contaminated with a lot of stuff. So we use that no filtered water. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. That, I know some people, you know, drink rainwater, but there's corrosive acids in it and there's metals in it and it's not pure distilled, right? It still has some yeah. stuff when it falls. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, uh, what have we done to the world? So, <laughs> how how it was easier back in the day when you can just when you when you reach a creek or or any kind of body of water, you can just drink it, and there was no contaminants in it. It's just it's a completely different world now. Yeah, what I moved over here, here over here in, the, in our country when it rains, if I have my car standing outside, you can see the raindrops later on on the car because of the stuff which is in the rain. So if wow. you don't mind, I'm not going to drink that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how many different things, how many different meters you need. It's almost like EMFs. Like when I moved up here to Idaho, uh, I'm very rural. I am I border a, a forest and I would walk out in the in the backwoods and bring my TDS meter and I would, I would measure the, the running uh, creeks like in the summer. And I was so surprised to see it was often under 10 parts per million. I think one was even like five, but who knows what else is in the water, right? That's just like one aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. true. We need to be mindful, definitely. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, issue with, the issue with water is that it mirrors, uh, uh, or, you know, also the contaminants. Mm -hmm. And uh, we touched upon it before. And for me, that's a very, very important subject because the whole memory of all the contaminants and also for, from EMFs and stuff like that will stay in the water. And that's a thing we cannot measure. I mean, that's what we do. there are no meters to measure that. And that's why it's very important after every uh, uh, cleaning of the water, whatever device you use for that, uh, the memory of all the toxins, and I read somewhere an article in, that in our country now these days you have 120,000 different kind of chemicals in the water, and that's a lot. Uh, so even if you would take all of them out, the memory is still inside, mm -hmm. and that's why it makes it all, I mean, as important uh, to make it coherent again as to take out the toxins. Mm. That's the that's the key uh, uh, of analemma, actually. You know, yeah. uh, when you when you remember um, Nikola Tesla said, if you if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And water is a broadband absorber, receiver, and transmitter of energy, frequency, and vibration. It's a communication system. So it's a way like life informs life about life through water. And water remembers everything. That's why analemma is so important because it's the, since water is going to pick up any dominant frequency of its environment, it will always pick the dominant one. And uh, in our experience, analemma is the most positive dominant frequency there is. We, uh, we, we, we just haven't found another one, a higher one. And when you treat it, when you treat the water with analemma, that all of the water molecules enter into that very special crystalline state. And then you know that you have the highest potential water. Mm -hmm. That's and why even, it's always, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if you would not take out the toxins, <clears throat> then I'm convinced that the toxins themselves will be less harmful mm -hmm. because they are kind of reloaded. I wouldn't put a lot of arsen in the water and drink it, if you know what I mean. But still... If you would compare it with the same dosage in uh, uh, non-treated water and what treated water with analemma, I'm convinced that the one is less toxic energy-wise than the one uh, uh, with the toxins in, uh, both of the toxins in. Because if you take down the part of the energy, you still have left the physical part, but you will take down the energy. And uh, but we are, but uh, that's a test, but it's going to be a use test we're going to want to do in the future. If you would make like a river coherent and the whole microbiome, because the whole microbiome in a soil, in a river, in a sea, in your gut is reacting very positive 
we already proved that from all sides uh, uh, on uh, with uh, with water lab, uh, what analemma water. So if you would make like the river coherent again with analemma water, I'm convinced that over time the rivers will be capable of cleaning themselves again because the microbiome will come back as it should be in that river. And actually it's the microbiome over and over again, we see that those little bacteria and all what's over there, these amazing creatures, actually they clean up. And a lot of uh, uh, soil which has been spoiled in our country, actually now they use bacteria colony, colon, colonies, you know, to clean up. And those, we've, they found bacteria who can eat plastic. So all these creatures, actually, they have to do. The, we don't need to clean it at the end of the the uh, at the end of the story. I believe, personally believe, if you would make everything coherent again, this planet will revive itself through the microbiome. Wow! I I, I love the whole microbiome thing. When you look at it, uh, people we like to think of ourselves as single species, like we are human species, but we are actually an entire ecosystem. We're living in symbiosis with trillions, trillions of microorganisms. I don't know, do you know, but there are three, up to 300 times more microbial genes in human body than human genes. And they are actually creating enzymes, which are crucial for breaking down foods for us so we get the nutrients. Uh, also, there is one extraordinary fact is uh, uh, these bacteria in our microbiome are actually creating, they're uh, creating uh, neurotransmitters, which are uh, uh, actually uh, through the gut um, uh, brain axis are being delivered to our brain and they're changing our uh, neural pathways. So they're actually determining how you think, how you feel, and how you are. So this equilibrium is extraordinarily important. And that's why we wanted to do a study, actually, double-blind, placebo-controlled, to see uh, um, what's the effect of our uh, water on human microbiome. So uh, we ha we did a baseline test where, where we uh, to, when we measured what is called dysbiosis index of the microbiome. So dysbiosis index measures the degree of deviation within the microbiome, taking into account all the bacterial phyla and species and their weighing factor. It's kind of a snapshot of your microbiome. So then uh, people would were drinking um, a liter and a half of analemma water for three months without changing anything else in the world. So they didn't change their diets, their exercise regime, everything stays the same, stayed the same. And then we took another snapshot, so to speak, and then we compared. And there was on average 17% improvement of the dysbiosis index over the placebo. So we definitely proved that something remarkable happens with our microbiome just by drinking the water. And three months is you know, the people, if you talk with people, doctors who know a lot about microbiome, then three months, that's fast because it takes a long time to change your microbiome. So probably after half a year, so a couple of people we're going to follow for half a year, for a year, also on brain waves and stuff like that, just to see what happens over time. Because these 70% is really a lot in three months' time. Because usually it takes, if you go for a special diet, it will take you up to four months be before it starts changing. That's incredible. Um, I want to circle back too to the the uh, memory of the contaminants staying in the water. I, I think that's um, a really important point. And I, I forget if we talked about it in the first show um, where I, I brought up my experience with, the, you know, the house I'm in now is on spring water. Um, and then... Other houses I've been in were on well water up here in the rural area. But whenever I go back to municipal drinking water, um, I notice it tastes gross. <laughs> and that's even, you know, same exact filter, the, you know, same, same exact filter. And the water tastes just kind of gross. That's the only way I could describe it. And using the analemma or, you know, doing really anything to it besides just drinking it straight out of the filter makes a huge difference. Um, and to me, that is proof. Uh, I think when you're sensitive, you can, you can taste that difference. And I've gone to my family's house and um, I still have to get them uh, all an analemma 
uh, wands because uh, they don't, you know, they're renting, so they don't have access to the 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 whole house kind of setup. But um, I, I gave them a little frequency thing, which you guys have probably seen, where you can beam frequencies into you know your glass of water, like five twenty eight hertz or whatever, and that did make a difference. But you're using you know the phone and the internet and cellular data. <laughs> and that's probably so much different from using, you know, something natural like the analemma. I, I personally, I think you cannot compare it. I mean, uh, the uh, we work a lot uh, in our clinic with frequencies, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you really have to know what you're playing with, uh, how to use the frequencies, because on one hand, a frequency can be positive and on the other in another octave, it can be harmful. And, and we don't have a lot of knowledge about that. And uh, I mean, actually we use a lot of times a phone, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth to destroy the structure of water. And in our test, you know, with, when we do water divide, that's how we know that uh, analemma water is so stable. And uh, for most water device, we see that it's gonna, going to be destroyed. So to me, it's always strange to use a cell phone or something like that, you know, to treat the water. But it's my own personal opinion about it. We'd we'll be careful with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I had like a hydrogen water machine uh, where basically you you would put filtered water in a little chamber and then it runs, I think it's like 33% oxygen, 33% hydrogen, whatever, through the water. But you can pick the frequency and... uh I never noticed as much of a difference with that as I did with the analemma, even though it's a big machine and it's, it's more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we should make it more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, our commitment is actually where I, I was asked this question uh, on a, a recent podcast. They, they were asked like, oh, uh, it, it's so affordable. It's affordable with intention. What we wanted to do is to make uh, uh, the product affordable to basically almost every single person on the planet so that mm -hmm. everybody will get the benefit. That's the whole point. If all of us, this is uh, what I love about um, the whole thing. If every single person enters a state of coherence, you become the part of the solution, not be, not the part of the problem. Because all of us, like, like water is, since 99% of our molecules are water, we are like an antenna. So you become the transmitter of what's relevant and you become in harmony with the natural flow of, of the earth. So you become more natural in a way. I don't know, have we mentioned last time the study that we did on, on, um, on seeds where we measured uh, the biophoton emission on seeds? We might have. It's been it's been so long. I should have revisited that show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's an amazing it's an amazing study. That's where we truly realize that this water connects you to something which is much much wider than just our body. So we uh, we measured biophoton emissions of seeds. So we watered some seeds with regular water and some seeds with analemma water. And what we found out is extraordinary difference with analemma water. We started seeing this sinusoidal shape. We started seeing peaks and valleys of biophoton emissions, and we, we we didn't really realize what 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 was the causation, what was the the thing happening. And after a while, we realized that it's connected with the tides. So there is this natural circadian rhythm, so to speak. There is natural uh, um, electromagnetic environment that you become a part when you are exposed to NLM water. So it connect, that's why we say that it opens pathways to you to be connected to cosmos. So you actually, to Mother Earth, you are connected electromagnetically to something which is to the larger ecosystem. And the seeds that were watered with regular water, they didn't have this happening. Wow. You know, we like to call it conscious water. <clears throat> for because that of that. Because of that. What we see in practice that people who drink the water they become more conscious mm -hmm. and they stop doing, you know, and we see that many times people start eating less meat. They're going to think more about life after death, whatever, you know, they just become more conscious. And that's exactly, <clears throat> touches a very important point, why we do this. 
and uh, what our goals are. The end goal, the end game for us is that all the water on this planet is coherent. And then it's going to be the end game of Analemma, uh, financially wise, if you know <laughs> what I mean. But that, actually, that's why, that's why we started this. Uh, we never started this as a, a, a personal business model, you know, to earn a lot of money for ourselves. Uh, we still don't. We put everything back into research because we want to be sure what we talk about. And because we never must forget why we start doing this. And it, it is to help this planet, the people and the animals, everything on this planet. And so that's why I'm talking about rivers. If we could do rivers, we'd be very pleased, you know, to bring back the consciousness on this planet, to restore this planet, to restore the microbiome of this planet, then it can restore itself. We don't need to clean this planet. There are maybe plastics and stuff like that, but <clears throat> the planet, planet is very capable of cleaning itself if we can restore the equilibrium uh, energy-wise in the water, in the microbiome, everything. And that is our end goal. And we hope to reach that uh, four years ago and two years, so we're still not there. But... <laughs> will take some time, but that's still our end game. Wow, that's incredible. And that's one reason why we should keep it affordable. And even this is, of course, for a lot of people expensive. It depends on where you live. But, I mean, unfortunately, we cannot do it cheaper than that. But uh, uh, that's why we're not into making, a, you know, earn a lot of money in a short time, uh, whatever. I mean, it's everything is going to be back, put back in the company to do research, uh, bring consciousness about water, et cetera, et cetera. That's our goal. That's awesome. I, I was curious, are you guys, um, I, I think we spoke briefly on vortexing water in the first show we did. Are you, are you guys doing any combination studies of seeing if, you know, the effect is amplified? If you like, that's what I'm planning on doing here is, you know, spinning the water and then putting it through the analemma or something like that. The, the Yes, in the past we did, I can say a lot about it. In the past, we did a lot of research on this vortexing. And, uh, of course, the whole idea is from Victor Schauberger. Mm -hmm. And he's one of my heroes. Uh, let's put it that way. He brought a lot. The only issue is that it's not uh, sufficient anymore. And uh, all, people always ask the question, how come, how di uh, did it happen in the past? I mean, what happened? Well, in the past, the water didn't need to be stable because it was not, first of all, contaminated. No, we didn't have any EMFs and maybe not so many bad thoughts of people, uh, uh, all of it together. Uh, and nature did it by vortexing, constantly left to right, etc. In that way, it kept itself alive in a strong position. Uh, because, I mean, the influences were not that bad, but influences now are so high, so big, and in nature, does, water doesn't get the chance anymore to do its vortexing because we make straight channels. All the pipes in our houses are straight, 90 uh, degrees angles and stuff like that. And uh, we keep on using the same water. Uh, it, the water is purified maybe chemically, but uh, even that you can question. Uh, but like we talked before, we said before, the energy is still inside. We didn't have all these 120,000 chemicals, which have been run over and over again. All the Prozac, the pill, whatever, everything is inside. Uh, and some places over here, a lot of cocaine. And so that's true. I mean, you know, we, you know exactly over in the country, which, uh, uh, um, in which cities they use a lot of cocaine over here. You can find it in the water. And it will stay in there. The energy will stay in there. So in the old times, that was not an issue. Nature was doing it by himself. The whole microbiome of the river was okay. So it was cleaning itself. But these days, it's not happening anymore. And so that's what, that was our biggest effort in the past to make the water stable. That it keeps on, it will do its stuff. So go back to your question of the vortexing. Yes, I love vortexing. But... If you put it next to your cell phone, the energy is out. And then people say, well, I'm going to drink it very quickly. Then it's okay. No, because your body is not isolated. I mean, you carry your mobile, mobile phone on, 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 uh, in your pocket. There's your Wi-Fi over there, et cetera, et cetera. So only by vortexing, 
you won't achieve uh, uh, what you want. In the new home analama, actually, it is vortexing inside. Mm. And uh, the uh, reason is uh, that when it vortexes inside, it will touch all, all the water will be touching, you know, the mother water. And that's the main reason why we do it. So if you have nothing there at hand, vortexing, of course, always helps. And uh, personally, I like to vortex with the analemma in the glass. You know, mm -hmm. if you do it uh, strongly enough, it will vortex by itself. And personally, but it's my own story, I like to put some intention also into it of mm -hmm. what you want to achieve, what you want for your health, whatever. And it makes it even a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. Of course, officially, we don't talk about it. And in research, we, we don't because we have a double blind <laughs> placebo. So people don't know. They have the same kind of stick. They don't know what's inside. So we know even without intention, it does its, uh, its work. Uh, but I love, water loves beautiful intentions. Uh, look at the work from Veda Austin, et cetera, et cetera. Many people have done a lot of work on it. So it will help. So if you want a vortex, do it. But I like to vortex with my analemma <laughs> wand and put my intention in it. Yeah, I like that you mentioned uh, bad thoughts from people, and then you talked about Prozac and <laughs> cocaine. Um, the, the energetics of that as well, like you think of how many people just in the U.S. that are taking SSRIs and um, antipsychotic drugs or whatever, um, the consciousness of those people, and then urinating into the toilet, and then that goes to the wastewater treatment plant, and the yeah, wastewater and treatment plant And you drink doesn't... it again. Right. <laughs> it doesn't get out right at the no. plant so yeah. that's yeah. why it's so important to 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 uh expose water to the most dominant positive frequency because it will mm -hmm. always adjust to that mm -hmm. if it's not exposed to that it will just pick up whatever it's there that's mm -hmm. the 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 perfect energetic purification of the water it just holds on to that frequency and as we talked about so many times it remains there this is the magic of an alema it actually stays there it doesn't lose its coherence we as we talked about it already we radiated it we did all kinds of things to it but it remains stable that's why it's really so special and that's why we feel in an alema that we are we're the stewards of this water we are not yeah. owners of it in any way or form. Mm -hmm. We actually really believe that Mother Earth is the hidden voice of this project. It came through us at this very particular point in time because it was necessary. Mm -hmm. and, and then people can still have proper water in their lives. And it's really important to have that. Yeah, I hope people listen to the first show. I'm going to encourage that in the beginning of this because otherwise they'll be lost. But um yeah you guys explained how it's made in the first show and essentially it's was it two years that it takes and you use various different things geometric yeah. shapes lightning strikes can't remember the rest <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's a several fold process and then when you do the last one then it just water enters into this very particular state and it doesn't leave it so, and, and the elegance of it is really when you create the mother water, since any H2O molecule that comes into close proximity to it will mimic its exact structure. So the only thing that you have to have is the mother water, either in the whole um, house system or in the, in the uh, wand. You just swirl it, but the system is actually the same. Mm. I, I, was, I just had a thought and this might be counterproductive, but if you guys thought of, you know, on like a bottle like this, like putting like a little, um, like making a little stir that you can fit on your bottle that will stir it for you. So you can just walk away. I don't know well, if the EMS we, on that. Would we be are actually, <laughs> we, we are actually creating the next thing that we're going to come up with is the water pitcher that has the, the large bubble with the mother water inside. Oh, cool. So you, 
So you're not going to have to stir it anymore. You just put the water inside and that's basically it. So that's the next thing uh, that we are going to come up uh, with. I mean, this the, the, the we came with the regular analemma and the whole house because then you can install in the piping system of your house. Then any, wherever you open your faucet, there uh, uh, the, the water will be. Maybe we can touch upon on the uh, amazing benefits of... of uh, um, Taking baths in an Alema water. This is where we kind of ventured now. Uh, we actually, uh, uh, there is Hydrate Spa in America. Uh, there is a doctor there, uh, which is doing uh, research on people uh, taking baths in Alema water. And we now plan to do a 100 people study. We already have now more than several people did it, and the results are really phenomenal. Something really amazing happens when people take bath in an alum water, anywhere between 20 minutes and one hour. So we're, uh, we measured cardiac output, um, stroke volume, blood viscosity, and every single person in the study had an improvement. Even athletes. We had one very powerful athlete, and even their cardiac uh, output improved. And people that had actually severe issues with cardiac output, that had severe issues with the heart, they have the biggest result. And not only that, it does not come back. So it's not like you just take a, a one session or two session or three session and then it goes back. The results are stable. So something electromagnetically happens there and the result continue to be. So it's really, really, really amazing. And uh, as soon as we have full 100 people study, we're going to uh, uh, share the results with you. But I'm telling you, every single person in the study up until now, and we are now, I, I believe, 10 or 15 people, all of them had exactly the same results. It's just a matter of how big is the improvement because people who have powerful hearts, <laughs> They have improved, but it's not as dramatic or uh, as with people that actually have issues with it. So something happens there. So, of course, when you have whole house and lemma in your house, you just drink it and you have the benefit. But this is the really powerful added benefit anybody can enjoy. And there's, there's a part to it, you know, which uh, people, it's not only because you absorb one liter of water inside, but we have a water pool inside, but we also have a water pool outside. We have an atmosphere with damp around us. We are electromagnetical beings. And we think that because you lay in a bathtub, your whole electromagnetical field actually is being washed. You know, the electromagnetical dirt will be washed from you. And it will clear. Uh, it's already been proven that even sound on the water uh, um, it takes out the water takes out the impurities of the sound and makes it even like already in normal water. So wow. suppose what would happen if you would use sound on the water? That's going to be a different story. But we forget always is like if you stand next to somebody else, you'll feel it. It's his electromagnetical field what you feel, and. This is, I mean, for me, that's common sense that you have an electrical field, you have nerves, you have nerves, you have everything. And like also on a wire in your house, the impurities of all your devices will be on your wires. And you can measure that. Uh, and we call it over here dirty energy. You have measurements, you know, you can put it in, uh, and especially, you know, with, uh, the, all these modern devices, they use, they create a lot of impure energy in your house. And uh, so the same thing counts on your body. Our electromagnetic field, which is huge, there are a lot of imp in, uh, imperfections and impurities in it. And besides that, you, the water comes inside, I think it's also been washed the impurities away. That's why showering or taking a bath with it, you know, as an extra plus, and not above only just drinking it. 
But I have to now, we were kind of mentioned several times energy. So I want to come back uh, uh, to tell the story about this double blind placebo controlled ATP study that we did. So uh, adenosine triphosphate is the primary energy currency of the cell. It is uh, um, directly responsible for powering the majority of cellular processes in our body. So our body is dependent on, on ATP. So we're not talking about only uh, muscle contraction. We're talking about nerve impulse transmission, biochemical reactions. So almost everything is dependent on the levels of ATP. It's also interesting, uh, many people don't know uh, which organ in the body is the biggest consumer of ATP. is actually the brain. 25% of our entire energy reserves go to brain. If one neuron wants to sell an impulse to a neighboring cell, it needs to hydrolyze 1 billion ATP molecules. And there are billions of neurons. Of course, ATP is connected to a higher cognitive performance as well. So to, this is a short introduction. So we did double line placebo control test where we measured if drinking an Alema water would provoke the rise in uh, mitochondrial energy. So we did the baseline test. We employed luciferase, which is an enzyme that catalyzes the light production in bioluminescent organisms. And due to its extraordinary sensitivity, you can measure intercellular ATP in, in biological systems. So um, we did a baseline test and people were drinking uh, NLMO water without changing anything else in the world, diets, exercise room, anything. And after two months, we did another test. And there was significant rise. We're talking about 20% rise over the placebo in the ATP level. So entire mitochondrial energy of the body rose by 20% just by drinking wow. the water. So it's really, really uh, uh, remarkable to observe. So we are talking about energies and this is like the direct how when you change the energetics, the biology follows and directly in the part which is energy itself within the body. And you know what the funny story is? Also, mitochondria have been proved to be bacterias before. So again, we go back to those little guys doing all the work. They seem to love it. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, it seems like there's no part of human physiology that the analemma doesn't improve. You guys will probably find in and all the future studies you do, that's, I mean, if you can increase ATP, that's improving everything, right? <laughs> so, yeah, basically, the next thing that we want to kind of check, you know, there is this whole craze about NAD levels mm -hmm. and the NMN, uh, 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 like the connection between NMN and NAD. We want to go kind of circumvent it because there is a great cor correlation between ATP and NAD. We want to see whether just drinking the water will uh, uh, kind of increase the rise in NAD levels. But anyhow, just like you mentioned, uh, uh, all of the studies that we did basically uh, really show that any part of the biology changes. Just like I mentioned, when you change the energetics, which is the core, biology follows. And it's wow. it's very simple for us, you know, the, because, I mean, we are water. 99% of our molecules is water. There is nothing, literally nothing, you know, in our body where water doesn't play the key role. So if you change that in the positive, then you're gonna change everything. And uh, like we discussed before, we are a microbiome completely. I think some of the heard, heard a podcast last week, somebody, I think it was Jack Bush, not sure it was him, but he said, we have more than 1000 different uh, DNA in our brains. That means that there we have a microbiome in our brain. Uh, uh, a healthy bladder has 60 bacteria in, uh, in it. I mean, in your lungs, 600 plus, etc. So if they will become pleased of analemma water and all everything else, then, well, of course, it will work on every area in your body. And That's so right. also consciousness. Wow. Yeah, you probably need need ATP to uh, to have consciousness, right? <laughs> yeah, these my, the, the also, I mean, the, I don't know the, 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 the whole story about it, but more and more talks about it that actually these mitochondria have a lot to do with consciousness. And also because uh, uh, there is another story to mitochondria, actually ATP 
ATP itself makes the, the water in your cell coherent. Mm. So, and the more coherent your water is, the more information you get from out of the cosmos. And I'm going to tell you one other small detail we found in our water testing that actually our water knew two hours before sunrise that the sun was coming up. That were already it was starting to change in biophoton emission. We don't have a clue how, but probably they catch more electrons, whatever what's coming up over there. And uh, um, I mean, there's a lot more to it than we know, of course. And only already from that perspective, that if the mitochondria, when they, you have a higher rise of mitochondria, a higher rise of ATP. So more coherence, that also means by itself already more coherence in a cell. And you have already more coherence because you drink analemma water. So all of it will, your conscious level will, will rise. Wow. I, of course, and your physical levels. But uh, I, I just had a thought. I, for years, I've been telling people that they should cover their, their outdoor garden in like a greenhouse to protect it from you know, as we talked about the rain that's often contaminated, I wonder if someone waters their raised bed garden that's exposed to the, the sky with analemma water, if it'd be protected, you know, between, you know, if it kind of, you know, supports the microbiome and then it rains, maybe the soil gets a hit and then you water it with analemma and yeah. it kind of, I don't know. I can, just, I, can, I can give an answer to that. First of all, uh, we are uh, in a couple of, month, uh, maybe sooner, we already have a garden analemma. So you can put it on your garden hose and you can water your garden with it. So uh, good news for you for that. <laughs> uh, I understand what you say. There's a little but. And the but is with the greenhouse. I have a person in my own greenhouse over here and I have an outside garden. A greenhouse blocks the UV. And UV is also a very important information. And uh, so, on the other hand, you're right, because a lot of toxins, they come down. We talked about it in the rainwater. For me, it, there is a but. But still, I think because the whole microbiome in the soil, what Mario talked about, will be a lot more improved. So it will be very beneficial for the plants. So you get healthier plants anyway. And also the toxins which rain down, they will be easily transmitted into other stuff because of the microbiome. So, of course, everything depends on where you have your, uh, 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 your garden, next to the highway or next to an industrial complex or whatever. But if you have trees around it, uh, uh, we saw, you know, it takes away enough. So for, there is something to say for your story of, you know, protecting it. But on the other hand, you also take away a part of the information. And I feel comfortable, as we saw in our test, that this, my soil is strong enough to clean it. If you know what I mean? Mm. I definitely uh, agree. Uh, I think that uh, uh, exposing, so to, to have the UV coming to the plants is going to be uh, uh, very important. But not only that, uh, I can just share how resilient plants become when you water them with an alama water. We really kind of, we did uh, like with the tomatoes, we took, we did the three generations. You, we grew tomato, took, took the seed out, planted and replanted three times. After three generations, they almost don't, they almost don't need no pesticides. They become so resilient. So definitely, I think that this water helps in that particular way. So even those toxins, if they fall down, they will be transmuted in some way or form. So the plant will become resilient to it. The same thing we proved with humans and, and EMFs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we did the test when people use the cell phone and we measured their brain waves and we gave them analemma water and guys who drank regular water their brain waves stayed the same but uh, 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 guys who drink uh, analemma water after they use the cell phone there was an immediate cooling effect on the brain waves so there is something uh, happening there which really provides this protective effect okay, uh, maybe i can uh, sh share an, uh, a nice uh, story 
in the greenhouse, when we did all the tests, we bought a whole greenhouse and we did the tests, you know, uh, it was a, a over six acres greenhouse. Mm. All the tests were for years on tomatoes, cucumbers and stuff like that. After we stopped with the, doing the tests over there, somebody bought a greenhouse and he's still using the Analemma water. And he's year after year, he's becoming more amazed what's happening over there. Because like the cucumbers, usually I think they deliver cucumbers for a maximum of 12 weeks. And now he says they're still delivering after 24 weeks. Wow. So they give double as much, not at the same time, but they keep on giving their cucumbers. He said, I don't need any pesticides. I don't need anything. I mean, people come here and watch, how will do I do it? Well, by using the water. So what it means that year after year, there's also a building up effect. Like Mario said, after three generations, we got a very powerful tomatoes. And uh, so hopefully the children from my children will be very, very strong. I don't know I'm the first generation is going to drink it, my children are the second generation. But it will be interesting to uh, actually to see what happens also over time. And uh, uh, so it has its immediate effect, no doubts about it. We proved it from every side. But I'm convinced that also over the years, the whole system will become stronger and you get a build-up effect also. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, it's, that, I think that's the most exciting part for me about what you're doing uh, is the, the food aspect because everyone needs to eat and we're not in a good situation, uh, especially here in northern latitudes. You know, if, if, if you live somewhere where it snows, you don't really have access to high quality produce. You know, fruits and vegetables are, are picked unripe and, you know, shipped very far and they don't, they probably have very, very little biophotons, if any, in them, right? Yes, th this oh. this is why we we understand the importance of that big time. That's why we're really investing now in that particular area. You know, the, these agriculture giants, they recognize only two things, yield and shelf life. Uh, uh, but even with that, we want to prove them that if you use the water, you will have those results. But they don't mind about the energetics and they are the most important element. We're actually now uh, 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 creating another system, which is also very, very uh, uh, exciting and interesting. During the, um, the glycan age study, that we haven't even mentioned it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, during the glycan age study, we told people to expose the analemma to the sun because this water loves the sun. So this lady exposed, uh, always put in this small garden with uh, short plants, she put her on a lemma every single day. And after a month, she sent me the photo of the garden. So it's like you drew a circle around the, the place where Nalema stood and all of the uh, plants drew one inch higher than anywhere else. So we actually now want to do a math. We want to kind of uh, create uh, to, to see what's the radius of the effect. And then we can create a grid. Uh, and that will definitely produce much higher yield and much higher shelf life. We already know this, but we want to do the math. So then we can employ this technology, which will cover all the all the checks, you know, all the boxes for the uh, big agriculture industry. But what's m much more important is that people will get the right food. The food will be full of energy like it was intended. And all that energy will end up back into people's cells. So we really kind of want to change the whole agriculture game. I know that we took a lot of huge tasks uh, on our VAX, but you know, um, whenever you do something, when you serve something higher than yourself, then you have this backup. And we definitely believe in it. And, and uh, we believe that we will uh, and make it so. And That's also important. another part we must not forget in it, uh, if you are in favor, yes or no, personally, I don't eat any meat, but the the also now we're going to start off tests, you know, we built a bigger device, like home device for five centimeter pipes. Mm. And so we're going to do whole cow stables now and uh, checking out how the cows are doing, what the milk is going to do. Wow. Uh, and especially over here in our country, the manure is a big problem. I have a big nitrogen problem, at least that's what they say. And uh, we're going to do a lot of tests on that, you know, to see what happens with uh, uh, with the manure, with the cows itself. We already proved 
in pig farms that actually the pigs were a, a lot more happy and was even in the big in one of the biggest agriculture magazine in our country and i didn't know about it they just bought an analemma stick and actually it was quite fun they just bought it she was one of my students and she put it in the, the reservoir of the water for the pigs and then they found out that it had about 50 percent less abortion uh, almost no immune problems etc cetera, etc cetera. so there was a huge article in a magazine and i didn't even know about it just by using one analemma wand wow. so also over there in that part of agriculture there's a huge opportunity to get healthier animals and i mean personally i'm not in favor of eating them i'm a veterinarian so i'd rather cure them but still i mean it's the fact what it is uh, how we live so also on that part you know you get the the uh, beautiful you can have beautiful results wow i i've kept uh, fruit trees alive through the winter here downstairs they're in uh, potted plants that have like citrus and avocado and different ones. And uh, you have me thinking maybe I should shove a wand in each uh, each pot. I mean, it'd be kind of expensive. I guess a better way to do it would be this whole house, right? <laughs> yeah, most Probably definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I'm telling you, uh, yeah. as soon as we come up, when, when we do the math of the whole thing, then it would be interesting because we are going to create um, uh, 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 down the line agriculture applications, which will be uh, uh, affordable and in a, in a way, adjusted to the whole thing but that will be really interesting to notice if you just put one stick and see what's going to happen probably you don't even need to put one stick in every pot because we like mario said we need to do the math but right. there's a big chance that all these sticks start starting to communicate with each other and so the bigger the area is, I personally think if you put them in maybe in special geometric forms, we have to find out that you don't need like in every pot one uh, one want, maybe every 10 meters, maybe every 15 meters. We just don't know. But uh, it's going to be different if you have them like in a square, in a triangle, they start communicating. That's how nature works. I'm so, so I'm super excited about that to do uh, the, the the research on that. That is going to be extraordinary. That's pretty cool. Yeah, my friend uh, Charles Barber down in Texas, he's really big into electro culture. He has a pretty pretty awesome farm down there, and um, he was actually just interviewed on my friend Justin's podcast, Extreme Health Radio. And I guess electro culture is coming up now, where basically you use what is it, yeah. mixture of copper and wood? Are you familiar, Eric? With it? Yeah, I have it over here in my garden. Okay. I I, I'm, all, I'm always playing around with it all of my life. So, <laughs> yes. What would you say combined with analemma, I'm going to guess, is, is more powerful? <laughs> yeah. That's what, we do. That's what we're doing now over here. And we're going to see the, how things are going to explode this summer. I love this electroculture. But, again, <clears throat> water is a superconductor by itself already. And this whole... Electroculture is being, you know, what you want. You want to have electrons in in your soil, in your, because of how bigger the the difference is in the potential between the uh, uh, the planet and and, <clears throat> and the cosmos, the more healthy it is. And actually, that's the idea about what they do. So, and I'm quite con convinced that it's even another aspect we didn't talk about that it's heightens the uh, the potential, the electric potential. Mm -hmm. So it will be a lot more easy to get those electrons uh, in the soil uh, if you use the analemma water. So I'm convinced the combination, I'm going to do my test now for this year and the combination of the two, because I, lo I love both. Both of them work. So maybe, I don't know, we get tomato plants of 10 meters high, we're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that would be fun. <laughs> Wait, yeah, what yeah. and is there a way to simplify it? Because I still haven't found like exactly what it is. It's is it placing like copper rods in the soil at specific points? Well, there, there are many different thoughts about it. What I have over here, these are actually uh, the the wires you use for like in in uh, in fields for horses. They are an electric tool. That's iron with zinc on outside of it because zinc is positive. It attracts the negative ions, <clears throat> and it's like you know like a, a spider up in the sky 
and then it runs down with copper wires into the soil. Oh. But I know there are many different thoughts about it, so probably all of them work. I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I made a note here. I think going back to when you guys were talking about um, uh, not a fan of blocking. What was it? EMFs. I think. I think I, I told you guys in my first show, I made like a Faraday cage sensory deprivation room and it give, gives me anxiety. I regret doing it. I did like a double coat of paint <laughs> of uh, Y shield, you know, EMF blocking paint. And uh, I don't feel good in there. Maybe some people do, but I've, I've gone away from EMF blocking clothing and just blocking that, that, you know, mentality. I think it's a lot more powerful to, you know, strengthen and harmonize instead of trying to block it out. The blocking out, to be honest, I mean, uh, I'm pleased that you felt this way because I do feel the same. Uh, when I'm on, in an EMF protected uh, a, a club, I tried to sleep under it, I could not. Mm. And the reason is, yes, it blocks the EMFs, but like we said before, you're ele ele electromagnetic beings. I mean, quantum physics works in our body. We are bio quantum computers. We need our <clears throat> connection with the sun, with the moon, with all the planets. And I mean, many, a lot of energy is bombarding us. We are part of it. And so when you close yourself off, and then uh, from your shield, you have uh, completely yourself off, you shield yourself also completely off uh, the positive things you need. You need the cosmos. And that's why I, I only recommend it to people who really are, you know, they have an allergy for EMFs. You have those people, they cannot survive. So, but that's a different story. <clears throat> and for them, maybe it can be beneficial at least to get a good night of sleep. And, uh, but I cannot wear them. I have the same, like you have, I feel anxiety. I feel, I feel like, the, I don't know. Uh, I don't feel free. Let's put it that way. And so, it does what it does, but it also blocks the good energy. Mm. That's the reason why you feel that. Have you guys done uh, studies or, or thought about uh, <laughs> like stacked Wi-Fi signals? <laughs> because it's been my experience. If I'm you know, in 20 or 30 Wi-Fi signals, I definitely feel it versus just one or two. Um, and that effect on the water. Well, they the are the same story. And of course, it's a, the, the everything. There's a level for everything. I mean... EMFs by itself are not so special in that way. They are always there. But if you stack them and the more it becomes, actually, I went from my, my iPhone into Samsung because it has less EMF than an than uh, iPhone has. And it already helps me a little bit. <laughs> so everything is, you know, uh, uh, if you're going to stack it, I, I'm lucky. I live in a farm. Uh, I only have one Wi-Fi and it's my own one. And at 7 o'clock, it's off. And so my ki children cannot play anymore and do the gaming. That's a, not a good part of it. But the uh, uh, so we feel a lot more comfortable. We sleep a lot better. If we forget to put it out, we sleep less. And of course, if you live in a flat in an apartment and you have uh, all these Wi-Fi's around you, you have this staggering effect. So yes, I mean, there's a huge difference in it. Mm -hmm. And some people are more sensitive to one. I mean, uh, my uh, my wife personally, she's very sensitive to the Bluetooth. If I put my Bluetooth on in my car to do a phone call, she knows it in two seconds. You put your Bluetooth on. Mm, no, yes, she did. <laughs> she gets a headache from it. So even my children are sensitive to it. You feel it. Wow. So, but we have to live it. Right. Yeah, it's an interesting world we're in, right? It's it's definitely more complex, and it's it's uh, it's interesting to kind of for me to watch these like anti supplement people, anti device people, you know, just going back to ancestral ways. But we still have to use some modern technologies to mitigate modern problems. True. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, I agree with you one hundred percent. We should use whatever. Uh, it's all about what you do with it so to speak mm -hmm. if you use it to for the highest good of all then you're using it in the right way so mm -hmm. i'm i'm definitely pro using the technology for the betterment of all of us but in a natural way not in an unnatural way because we all need to come back to the connection with nature 
That's the number one yeah. thing. And and we could do one other thing, which is very important. And it is nobody did a research on any of this. You know, uh, we just do, and we look at the heating uh, aspect of uh, the EMFs and nothing else. If we will do a proper research on which frequencies we could use and would not be harmful, then things would change dramatically. Actually, in Russia, they're a lot farther with it than we are. And uh, the, um, uh, if you like the 50 hertz, 55 hertz, which we have, we use like now in electricity wise in our house, that's no good. That's not, it's, it's a, a unhealthy frequency. If you would change it into another frequency, which is more beneficial, then even EMFs would be less harmful. And we can do that with Wi-Fi. We can do that for 4G, 5G, everything, but we're just not busy with that. So the EMFs by itself are not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the frequency where we are on. And it would be a great research, and I don't think too expensive, and change it into the frequencies which are not so harmful. I love that. Yeah, my friend Brandon, um, the US distributor for, for Blue Shield, wrote a great article on scalar energy. And mm-hmm. I like the point he made that um, the, the scalar component, the non-physical component of electromagnetic fields is five times stronger than the transverse like physical <laughs> component. Uh, and that, that makes sense to me. There's, there's so yeah. much that we can't measure, but that could be causing more damage. <laughs> exactly. And of course, another thing is which we never look at is the, the, uh, what is the effect of one frequency on the other frequency? Hmm. So you have a whole layer on, on, on hundreds of different kinds of frequencies, and we don't have a clue what it does together. Same like with medication. You go to one doctor, you get your medication, you go to the next one, you get that one. In the end, you sometimes you end up with 10, 15 different types of medication, and all have the side effects, but nobody has any clue what it, how they work together, how they interact. The same issue we have with chemicals. I mean, a, a lot of discussion now is going on uh, in our country because we have, we use a lot of uh, Roundup and stuff like that. And even DDT is still found after 50 years in the soil, still there. And nobody does any research of the staggering effects of all of them together and maybe together with the Prozac I drink and et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, that's a huge thing people don't like to look at everybody looks at oh well, well uh, uh, even over here with the emfs every company measured their own emfs and not the other ones so that's the that's the the, the whole that's the, the the biggest problem that every single company needs their own transmitters and then you have this extraordinarily dense field which definitely has an influence i mean it's a no brainer when you look at it but everybody's kind of kind of looking away from it. So I think that uh, that's why living outside of cities is definitely going to become extraordinarily important. Yeah. If you want to remain healthy, if you want to remain connected to yourself, if you want to remain connected to nature, mm. cities are really kind of really, really energetically dense places to be. Unless you have a, a lot of money, right? For whole house system, you of know, course, whole house and a lab, uh, combine <laughs> everything, right? <laughs> no. That's no, but, 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 but still, I think it's also, I mean, it's not only a story about only protecting yourself. Yes, uh, um, I, I, we know mm-hmm. drinking the analemma water is very beneficial also against EMFs, it makes you stronger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But still, we have to deal with nature with trees and, well, not all of them drink the water. And uh, unfortunately, we have, uh, sorry to say, idiots who uh, uh, send up uh, satellites uh, yes. with 5G on this planet without any research. And I think now there are plans about 180,000 of those satellites. If uh, uh, people who, uh, how do you call them, meteorologists who look at the weather, if they cannot predict the weather anymore because of those satellites, do you really have to think any further that it could be harmful? I don't yeah. understand. Really, to be honest, I don't understand. That's that's a non-discussion. Yeah, we are truly on a microwave planet, right? And there's 
there's some dead zones you can go to, uh, like I've been, you know, a uh, uh, spot I used to go and kind of free climb with, with my friend where there'd be no cell phone reception in this little Valley. You can find spots like that, but you can't really live in those long-term yeah. <laughs> unless you want to be a homeless person. <laughs> yeah. That's why, and, but, that's, and, but you still have your satellites though. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you cannot hide from those. But that's why uh, we say that we believe that Mother Earth is the hidden voice of this project. Because mm -hmm. exactly because of this, we believe that this water is necessary. And then people can get the protection they wouldn't have any other way. It's, mm -hmm. it's weird and it's bad what we did with the planet. But at least nature is helping us in some way or form that we can still kind of um, storm through all of this period, because I definitely believe at one point in time, people will become conscious enough and we will see what is beneficial for us and what is actually ruining in us. And then we're just going to drop it. Mm -hmm. But at least until we reach that point, we have something that can really help us. And uh, like we said before, it will help on a conscious level. So things will change faster if people become more coherent. A word by itself says it already. You will be coherent. You will be in tune with your surrounding, with the nature. So you know when you're damaging. And you will stop that by itself. Mm, that's awesome. I, I wonder if you, if you make like a lake coherent, if someone fishes from that lake and catches the fish and eats, eats it, <laughs> if the fish will have more nutrition from the, the uh, water. I, I know of one thing for sure, the fish will be a lot healthier. And uh, uh, so if you eat a happy, healthy fish, that's a complete different story than, uh, well, actually we have a lot of problems over here. The fish over here in Isomir, the biggest lake in the center. I mean, there's almost no difference anymore between male and female fish because of all the hormones there which float around. If you don't mind, I don't like to eat that fish. <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, you know, in the US, I mean, a lot of hormones have been used in turkeys and uh, et cetera. You can see it on the people. San Francisco. Just look, at, yeah. just look at the pictures, look at all James Bond movies and see how the people, how they looked in the 60s, <laughs> how their body was shaped. And look at it now, the, 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 especially on the younger people, 20 years old. I mean, the differentiation between men and women becomes less and less. Some people think that's a good idea, <laughs> uh, but that's a completely different story, of course. But it has to do a lot in what we eat and uh, our nutrition, what's the, the, the toxins which are in the food, et cetera, et cetera. So that's not good news. And uh, all those fishes we eat, they're going to have the same story. So yes, actually, uh, next year, we're going to do a test on blue algae uh, in a big city over here in the Netherlands. They uh, actually are I'll have to call them if they already start pumping the water through our home device. And then it goes back into the river. And they want to see because they have a huge problems in the summer with blue algae. And our idea is if we can bring back the microbiome, the right microbiome in the lake again, then the blue algae won't be dominant anymore wow i could so, do that so, experiment here too because i have the same issue of course i have like a Sweet. six acre, six acre yeah. lake and i have an yeah. algae bloom every summer so and there is an inlet so basically it's like a it's a pipe that the, pipe. the water comes can, from the spring yeah. yep <laughs> comes so you up. can run it through wow and i'm, I'm I, we just don't know if it's going to work after one year already but i'm convinced at least in two or three years time maybe already in one year uh, uh, the problems will be solved. And that will be, if that works, it will be a very cheap solution for a lot of problems. But do mind in this swimming lake, what we talk about, it's a huge swimming lake. Uh, they're planning to uh, take the dirt out of the, you know, the nutrients out of the, 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 the bottom and because they cause the blue algae. And the estimated cost will be 10, 10 50 million. And you have to do that every two, three years. Oh. Well, I think our water device is a lot cheaper than that. <laughs> so, is, it the whole be... is it resistant to frost? Like, could you could I <clears throat> no. leave it? Oh, so you no. have to remove it in the winter. I wouldn't, uh, I don't know if it's strong enough. We didn't test it <clears throat> to okay. put it in there because I mean, it's a strong device by itself, but still there's water inside. So mm -hmm. that's an issue we don't know how to solve, to be honest. 
uh, because uh, 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 water, well, it's not that water doesn't like frost, but it changes completely, of course. It That's explode. actually funny because it's the only material when it becomes ice that it becomes bigger. All the rest of all the other materials you have on this planet, <laughs> it will be strong, uh, smaller, shrink, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I wonder maybe heat tape, but then you're introducing EMFs. And yeah, it's a tricky problem. <laughs> Yeah. No, we'll we'll figure it out. We just kind of come out with whatever we know that will work in whatever kind of environment or or or. So uh, we're going to be coming up with many uh, new applications. We barely scratched the surface of this, so we're just picking avenues, whatever kind of we are inspired to go with the research, because it really has so so many applications. It, it's and if exciting. something yeah. and if, if something crosses your mind, please share, <laughs> because you know we can do so much and we can open a whole new world with it. It's exciting what you guys are doing. I, I really love it. And um, before we we clo close out, I wanted to talk about just briefly the glycan age um, study, and you talked about it in our previous one. Mm. I actually have the test sitting on my dining room table here. Sweet. I think it's it's four. It's like four drops of blood, right? And yes. some at home test. Have you guys yes. done it yourself? Or? Uh, I haven't uh, because I already started drinking an Alema water before. So oh. then I couldn't do before and after, which would be awesome to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, I was late already, <laughs> so uh, that's why I didn't do it. But I why I love the glycan age. I know since you have it, so you you already know the whole story. But what I love about it is. Uh, these guys are actually leaders in the glycoscience. They have over 120 published scientific works on it. So they really know uh, uh, their science about it. And what I love about it is through the glycans, you can tell uh, uh, one side of it is the immunity, the other side is inflammation. So the whole mm -hmm. immunity part, glycans are very much involved in production of T cells. T killer cells are the number one defense system in our body. So these are the cells that actually hunt down pathogens in our body and they destroy them. So through the state mm -hmm. of glycans, you can very accurately uh, uh, determine the state of your immune system. So that's one end. The other end is that you have these pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory glycans. And through the balance of that, uh, now everybody knows that low systemic uh, uh, grade inflammation is the lead cause of all the uh, uh, chronic diseases. So uh, uh, these two glycans tell you the state of inflammation in your body long term. And when they put all of this together, then they you can very accurately predict your, not predict, but determine your biological age in contrast to your chronological age. And what we did, we took a snapshot of the uh, biological age of people in the study. Then again, they were drinking. We asked uh, uh, Genos, we asked glycan age, what is the shortest amount of time necessary for the glycans to change? And they told us it was three months, like that's the, the smallest amount of time. So we just kind of went with it. So people drank a liter and a half of water a day for three months without changing anything else in the world. And at the end, we did another snapshot. And almost every single person in the study experienced between one and 12 years of biological age regeneration. Their whole system got regenerated on cellular level. And you can, when you speak with those guys, they will tell you that this, through state of glycans, you can pretty accurately say what's going to happen to you down the line in seven or 10 or 15 years uh, in any particular area of your health so when your glycans change your biology is changing for the better and this is more detailed than like a hba1c test right like the hemoglobin a1c yeah, yeah, it's 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 actually very very accurate because it screens several things and then it puts all together so you have really kind of comprehensive insight into your uh, overall health this is what I love about uh, uh, about glycan age. Uh, just to mention uh, uh, some of the studies that we're now, I mentioned this NAD levels, this is something. We're actually going to go into deep, deep dive into the microbiome, going even deeper uh, into the whole story. And we're going to do a much larger study. We, uh, we are actually uh, going to... Um, 
collaborate. There's this method which was developed by scientists from Harvard, Stanford, and King's College in 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 UK. They really have one powerful method that uh, does a deep dive. And also, we are going to look into how uh, uh, what does an Alema water has with how our body metabolizes um, fats and metabolizes sugars. So we want to see that as well. And, and hopefully within uh, maybe half a year to a year time, we're going to have those results and we would be happy uh, to share that with you uh, when the results come, because that's also uh, uh, one groundbreaking uh, threshold for us. I love it. Yeah, I'd love to, to keep the discussion going. It seems like this uh, this area is never ending. I mean, I uh, every time I have new questions to ask you guys, and <laughs> um, I love that we focused a lot on the the consciousness aspect in this and the and the memory in this show because that's I don't think a lot of people think about that, especially with city water. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know, I, you know, uh, this experiment that Dr. Masaru Emoto did with, mm. with rice and water. I love it. He clearly showed that there is intelligence there. He, you know, he did, you know, he did two glasses. He uh, uh, put rice in, in both and put some water on it. And to one, he expressed every single day uh, uh, kindness and love. And to the other one, negative emotions. And anybody can do this at their house. And you see the difference. After a week, there is a beautiful fermented smell of rice. And, and there is no decomposition whatsoever in the rice where you express love. And the other one, there is complete rottening. And the key element there is water. Water you responds know, to it. You know what I, I tell my own patients if they uh, are willing to buy a, a, an Alema wand? Before you go to sleep, prepare your glass. And <clears throat> sometimes even I ask them, put it in your mouth that it takes over your energy. Have your thoughts, whatever you want, and then swirl your consci consciousness in the water. As we said, analemma water doesn't need it by itself, but it gives this plus extra of your consciousness, of your consciousness, and even physical problems, issues, etc. I had one person, and she claims, I'm very careful, just by doing that, and she uh, that her allergies almost disappear. Wow. And her allergies were blocking her uh, 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 her life, and I just I gave her a wand just for testing. I'm going to see what's going to happen. And I thought you're going to do that every evening before you go to sleep, and also in the morning. You see yourself without allergies. You know, put your stick in the mouth. See yourself without allergies. Swirl in the glass. And actually, she claims now that she's free of allergies. Wow. I I don't know if it's her mind, <laughs> whatever, but it seemed to work for her. So, you know. So there's a whole perspective even over there. We know what a mind can do. I know what my mind can do. If I feel good, if I uh, don't feel good. I mean, it's a huge difference. And But this analemma water makes it a lot more easier to put that energy of your consciousness in it. You know, only by positive thinking, usually people think, oh, I need to think positive. Oh, I need to think positive. Shit, I forgot to think positive. You know? And it's actually, that's a hard task to do, but it makes it a lot easier because you can focus on your intention in it. And even like your bottle, which you carry with you, put your intention in it and you can let it go and you will put it in the water and you have your intention with you all day. Mm. I that's mean, really it's, cool. not, it's not hard science what I'm talking about now. <laughs> But that's the practice what I see around me. That's great. That's I, why I love to work with animals because they have far less issues with it. And you see that those the, the analemma water works a lot faster with animals and plants than it does with human beings because they're not so buggering their own minds. Mm, that's so great. just an idea. If you have an analemma one, try it. You're going to love <laughs> it. What you just said, you gave me a thought of a, a huge uh, uh, cat fan, and I have a, a cat fountain. I like giving my cats like moving water and they're drinking yeah. water. And so I, I should put an extra wand and just hang it in their water because water is constantly flowing. It's like a waterfall little device. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, I, 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 saw you, I saw your cat when we started off. It was in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they only drink 5 ppm DDW um, and their coats, people, they always get uh complimented on their on their coat um they're both black 
but they look almost bluish in the sun. Mm. Uh, that's pretty cool. But I have to mention something really interesting <laughs> about cats. A colleague of mine, uh, she has a cat, and uh, she noticed that the cat don't want to uh, doesn't want to drink any other water than an alema, and she actually started wow. to play with it. So she offers two different kinds of water to it. And actually, she always goes to the NLM one, which wow. was really <laughs> ridiculous to observe because she started to experiment. She's actually a molecular biologist. She's PhD, so she loves to experiment with it. And the cat's, cat always goes to the NLM water, which is really amazing. That's a good test to use. Yeah, I, um, I need to get them on it. I can't imagine because I'm already extending their life with the deuterium depleted water so if i combine that they're probably going to live till they're 30 or something <laughs> cats, cats can do that i had my dog my, i had a dog before he became 22 wow and he only was living on the water for the last couple of years that's incredible so. well I have, to, I have to stop being lazy i have the gdv camera i gotta set this up on my my office desk and start doing some experiments of you know drinking regular water and then analemma water and then seeing my my photon you know distribution on here please send us send us the images yeah. we would love yeah. to see that <laughs> yeah yeah i will um what was it did i have one more question i was gonna oh yeah um i was just curious have you seen benefit of putting the analemma wand under a full moon like i used to do that with my crystals like put the crystals out during every full moon <laughs> but i'd imagine it's it's a significant significantly brighter light under the full moon and i know you guys used did you, the, you use the, the, yeah I, I, I did personally i did but just for fun with the dowsing uh, material testing and see what happens and for sure things change mm -hmm. the question is what is the best the full moon or the new moon mm -hmm. and uh to be honest i tend to differ to, to think uh and the opposite um if you know more of the 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 work of um, come on, what is a German guy? You have this the schools. Um, Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner. Yeah, mm -hmm. he always said, and he was right. We could prove it in our research that plants after the first day after new moon, they have an explosion of light. And Steiner always said you have to put the, the seeds in the soil a day after, two days after new moon because it's a rising energy. And actually, full moon is on its maximum, but it's almost already, if you're a little bit too late, you know, a downgoing energy. And we found out that plants react a lot more, also a full moon, but they react a lot, uh, a lot more on new moon. And since we already proved that, you know, the analemma water knows two hours before the sun rises, this water knows if it's full moon or new moon, although it's dark, if you know what I mean. Wow. So, and they even proved in the, the, the Wetzel's University that uh, 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 when the moon was, uh, the, the sun was blocked by the moon, you know, the water changed completely. So the, the electricity potential on the water changed completely. And they, they went all over this planet to test that. And uh, so, all these elements, full moon, of course, is one element which uh, the water will react on, but also so will do the sun. The morning sun is completely different than the evening sun. Mm. Ask photographers, they know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but also in the energy levels, you know, it's, it's uh, the, actually the morning sun has a very strong young aspect, a male aspect to it. There must be a lot of energy during the day, and from 12 o'clock down, it goes down. And the evening sun is a very yin sun. It's a left-turning spiral, and the morning sun has a right-turning spiral to calm down, and then we should go to bed, if you know what I mean. So all of these elements, you can measure it in, in the water. The water is constantly the one who is reacting with it, playing with it. And that's why, I mean, there's no such thing more fun than water. It does everything and everything is there. We're just not smart enough to get it out. Usually, <laughs> if you know what that's, I mean. That's a great place to end it. Um, I appreciate you guys coming on. And uh, if people use my code Blackburn, I think they get 10% off the whole house yes. system, which is Yes, yes, so. yes, yes, most definitely. 
Thank you so awesome. much, Matt. It's Thank you always so a pleasure to, to, to be with you and to share the space with you and to speak with you. You're such a powerhouse. So I love to talk with you. Oh, I, I appreciate you guys and everything that you're doing. And yeah, just thank you for, for shining light on this, this subject. And, and it, it's super important and overlooked. And so you guys have um, already contributed so much to the world. So thank you. And uh, thank yes. you so much for the lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you stick so around much. as we close it out. Thanks. I enjoyed my first chat with Eric and Mario, but the second one I enjoyed even more. I love how passionate they are. You can just tell in their voice that they actually are interested in what they're talking about, which is unfortunately rare nowadays. My favorite part of this conversation was the vortexing part and how they believe that vortexing is no longer sufficient to make our water coherent because it doesn't last. So I've been doing experiments here, vortexing water or using the Analemma or doing both. And because of my current home, I have both the whole house vortexing unit and the Analemma, which is probably overkill. I've just been using my light water, deuterium depleted water that hasn't run through my whole house system. And I just either vortex that or swirl the analemma wand in a glass of the DDW. And I can definitely say that the analemma water tastes better than the vortexed water. So I'm moving in a couple of weeks to be closer to my family. And I'm only going to put in the whole house analemma. I'm not going to put in the Dan Winters fractal water imploder, which is the Vortexer, if people are wondering what brand that was, I don't think that's necessary if you have the whole house Analemma installed. As I said in the interview, I'm most excited about the agricultural potential of Analemma. So growing food using water that's run over the Analemma water. I'm really excited to experiment with that in a few months and start growing food with the analemma water and see if I could taste the difference and see the difference. And I'll be documenting that journey. So check them out at analemma-water.com. On the top, you can click whole house analemma. If you own your home and you're able to install a whole house unit, I think it's definitely worth it. I really feel the difference. And a huge benefit is that you can bathe in it. So I think they said between 20 minutes and one hour is the optimal zone to see the benefits of topical use of analemma water. I'm really excited to see future research on that if it affects collagen and different things. And whether you buy their wand or the whole house, using the discount code Blackburn will save you 10% on any of their products. And if you're skeptical, I recommend starting with their wand. I definitely was when I heard about it. There's a million water structuring devices out now, but this is by far my favorite. And I like that they have the research to back it up. So analemma-water.com. We should definitely be doing something to our water after filtering it. I still believe and always will that Clean water is the most important thing. That's the start to get something like the seven stage water solution from my company, MitoLife, and then doing something after to the water, whatever it is that works for you, because there are these unseen contaminants. I love that he emphasized the consciousness of the people urinating, and then that's going to the wastewater treatment plant. And it's not removing the consciousness that is held in that fluid that left all of these dysfunctional human bodies. My website is matt-blackburn.com. I've been doing some updates to it. So on the front page there, I added a little disclaimer because 
a lot of the orders have been going directly to me, which I don't ship out any of these products. So I made a disclaimer. If the system has you check out on my Matt Blackburn site, click out of it because it's not going to process. When you click a link on my website, it should send you to the external website, to that company's website. You have to order from the company's website for the product to ship out because all I ship out is MitoLife products. And even that has to go through the MitoLife site. So if you've been ordering products on my site, hopefully that helps. Uh, if it doesn't send you to their website, then just Google the name of the company and pull it up that way. And usually the discount code Blackburn works on most of these websites. So there on the front, I have my nine featured products. I just changed the number one to the best seven stage drinking water filter in the world. That's MitoLife. Then I have, of course, my favorite cold quartz ozonator second, which goes perfectly with the MitoLife filter. If you want to up your game and start drinking cold ozonated water or giving that to your animals, that's very powerful, even to keep their water dish super sterile and clean. And then if you click on view all, you can see all of my favorite products. I recently added my favorite essential amino acids there called Fortigen. And I stockpile that stuff. I don't just buy one, I'll buy multiple at a time because it lasts for a really long time. It's just master amino pattern ratio of essential amino acids. And this stuff is way beyond bulk supplements, essential amino acids. I think a lot of people are promoting these powders on bulk supplements. And I think the quality is subpar and the effectiveness is definitely uh, subpar. This is the best protein powder that you can purchase. And just one scoop is 10 grams of 99% assembleable amino acids. So I've been combining this with the X3 bar. Uh, both products are from uh, John Jaquish. And it's a very powerful protocol. It's just 10 minutes or so a day. You have your push day and your pull day and you alternate and maybe take one or two days off a week. It's what I've been doing. And basically you go all out and it's just one set for each exercise because we just need that stimulus for muscle growth. I was consistent with this variable resistance band training when I was living in Idlewild about three years ago. And it wasn't long. It was about three or four months maximum. And I got my physique back from when I was deadlifting for six months straight and using dumbbells and various free weights and spending about an hour a day exercising just 10 minutes or less a day with the X3 in three to four months. And I was completely jacked back to where I was before. So I'm really excited to get back to it because I've been so busy homesteading for the last several years, tending to goats that I don't have anymore, tending to chickens, working on just growing this homestead and learning about off-grid uh, sustainable living. But it wasn't the same movement as really hardcore, all out, balls to the wall strength training that the X3 provides. So my old episodes of Mito Life Radio, you can go back on YouTube, just search Mito Life Radio, John Jaquish, and you can listen to my talk that I had with him. I think that was near the start of the show, at least two years ago. I really think he understands strength training. I mean, he has an incredible physique and his book, Weightlifting is a Waste of Time, is a really great book. And I like the safety of it. It protects your joints. This makes more sense for longevity than potentially getting severe back pain from traditional weightlifting. I'm just really drawn to uh, this type of training. And there's brain benefits, obviously. There's blood sugar control benefits. There's mood benefits. But I do see people over-exercising 
And I think that is not healthy. And I think that's very popular in the natural health community and multiple sets just doesn't make sense to me. And John has a lot of great interviews out there. If you just search John Jaquish interviews, um, they'll come up and I've listened to several of them and he makes really good arguments for variable resistance versus just dumbbells and free weights. I also put on there the NAD patch from Ion Layer. I'm really blown away by this product. I've been selling Mitolife NAD power for a couple of years now, and that's niacinamide, which is a form of vitamin B3 that is a precursor to nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, otherwise known as NAD, which is involved in multitude of cellular processes that regulates metabolism, stress, immunity, creating energy. It's actually involved in over 200 enzymatic reactions. But what's really unique about this ion layer product is they include six vials of powdered NAD. And when you activate it, with liquid. So you pour in the sterile liquid, you shake it up, then it's activated. But a lot of companies I've noticed with NAD patches, because I've looked into it over the years, they sell you already dissolved NAD solution, which is not going to be effective because it doesn't last that long. So I like that they do it this way. You mix it yourself. It's a little battery operated patch, which is pretty advanced. There's Studies on using that for ascorbic acid, which I'm looking into as a potential future MitoLife product, although you do need a doctor's note to use these patches because it's considered a medical device. The technology is called iontophoresis, so it actually creates a gradient. There's a positive and negative, the slight electrical charge, and that will push these compounds directly into your bloodstream. So instead of having to go and get an NAD IV, which a lot of people do, and it's very uncomfortable and it takes a long time, you can get nauseous and you don't feel good potentially. With this patch, there's no nausea. All I've noticed is if I use the same part of my arm consecutively for two or three days, I will get a rash. So I recommend moving it around if you're going to be doing, you know, a round of one week straight then switch parts of your body. Do one day on your stomach, one day on your left arm, one day on your right arm. But I've been really surprised at the grounded feeling and the energizing feeling that I get from these patches. It's pricey. So if that's too much to spend, even with $100 off on your first kit, so it comes out to 400 bucks, which... It's an incredible boost, even if you do it a few times a year, before or after a trip for recovery, or just to top off your NAD levels and get a nice energy boost. I've noticed improvement in sleep, mood, uh, driving long distances is less tiring. Uh, Really blown away by that product. So if you use the discount code BLACKBURN, you'll save $100 on your first kit. Then my brand is MitoLife. You can find that at mitolife.co. have a nice collection of supplements. We have digestive enzymes, systemic enzymes, dairy absorbing enzymes, spore-based probiotics. We have various vitamins, have whole food vitamin C, ascorbic acid, vitamin K2, vitamin E. A lot of people enjoy our MAG ATP product. That's a blend of two different forms of magnesium, magnesium taurate and bisglycinate. I take three of those with my breakfast, with coffee and the Shila Jeet. It goes really well. I'll also take four capsules of elk velvet antler and sometimes beef liver and oyster if I want an extra boost. Beef liver is an excellent source of B vitamins has all the B vitamins in it, plus zinc, copper, selenium. And then desiccated oyster has 
copper, zinc, selenium, iodine, which is a really rare mineral, and it's a great source of vitamin B12. So just focusing on the basics here with MitoLife, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, if you really have those dialed in, then you'll feel really good and experience vitality. And of course, check out the best water filtration system on the market, the most effective and the most affordable. That is the seven stage water solution. And they're going fast. So if you've been on the fence, be sure to order that. And I'll see you guys next Friday. Stay supercharged.